From the director of RoboCop and Showgirls comes America's favorite movie starring Casper Van Dien. It's Starship Troopers on this episode of Review. Sucked his brains out. Well, Mike, let's travel back 20 years. That's right, Jay. It's the 20th <laughs> anniversary of one of my favorite films of all time, Starship Troopers. Oh, I thought we were talking about Mr. Magoo starring Leslie Nielsen. It's my second favorite film okay. of all time. 1997 was the year of Titanic. This is the biggest movie ever. It's true. That's true. And Starship Troopers was also 97 but it was not the biggest movie ever. No, it did not, not do very well. It did like, okay-ish, I think. Well, therein lies the, the point of our discussion is that Starship Troopers is highly underrated film. Um, is it still though? Like I feel like, like people kind of no, got ev- it later. Well, I think everybody hates it. <laughs> really? Yeah, everybody okay. still hates it. Well, I avoided this movie in the theater. Uh, I, I guess I didn't realize it was Paul Verhoeven because I love Robocop, of course. So I didn't see it till it came out on video, but I remember when it was in theaters and reading the reviews and it just got savaged. And people were saying it was like a, like a pro-fascist movie. And you're like, did you miss the entire movie? Young people from all over the globe are joining up to fight for the future. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part too. <laughs> First of all, a lot of people just think it's a big dumb action movie about bugs. And it's, it has a lot of satire in it. Yeah. And it's not just fascism. There's a lot of other things that it's satirizing in the, in the movie. But on a surface level, it looks like a big dumb action movie about space bugs. But there's a lot more with, going with on With brain-dead lead characters. With, with <laughs> uh, on top of the dumb uh, giant bug action, there is a, a romance plot, a love... <laughs> Uh, it's not a love triangle, it's a love square. Yeah, yeah. And um, some che- pretty cheesy acting. Yes. My dad had to help me pack. Suddenly he's afraid he's never gonna see me again or something. And uh, so you have, you have surface elements that make it look like uh, Beverly Hills 90210 versus CGI bugs. Right. <laughs> uh. Which is off-putting for a lot of people, but you have to contrast the 90210 Saved by the Bell stuff with horrific violence, which, yes. which is part of what makes it work. Yes. There's like a, like a meta element to the whole movie, which is that it never really winks at you. It never, there's a couple tiny little moments that I think kind of go a little bit too far in like giving away its hand. But for the most part, like it's not, it, it, it is a fascist movie. Like it's a propaganda movie. Well, it's a and movie. Not in a, not in a like parody way or like a satire. I mean, the whole movie is satire, but that's the movie as a whole. But the way it's constructed and the way the characters are portrayed, they're portrayed as if they are from an old like World War II propaganda film. Yeah, well, I mean, they have the little, the propaganda reels in there that are the, you know, the Paul Verhoeven staple. Oh yeah. Um, Everyone's doing their part, are you? Which are, which are meant to be fun. But those, it, those are the, the most outwardly silly stuff in the movie. Yeah, and that, that's really like, hey, you know, yeah. this is what we're doing. But on top of that, then you have real characters. And, and that's, that's the rub. And I think that's what, what people, that, that what's off-putting to a lot of people. Because re-watching this movie, I mean, I, I watched this movie a ton of times in the movie theater. Oh, because, really? Yeah, <laughs> I loved it. Um, <laughs> But rewatching it, it is a very, um, it's a very bittersweet movie, and it's very depressing. Uh, well, are you talking when you're talking about the characters? Are you talking specifically about the arc of Johnny Rico? Rico. Rico. So you have Johnny Rico. He's our main character, um, and you have that wonderful opening scene where Michael Ironside is teaching class. And the lesson of the day is violence solves all problems. <laughs> I wonder what the city fathers of Hiroshima would say about that. You. They probably wouldn't say anything. Hiroshima was destroyed. Correct. Naked force has resolved more issues throughout history than any other factor. Which, if you're not, if you're watching him, you know, 
doodling and, and drawing the little like kissy face thing and he's sending it to, De to Denise Richards. On an early iPad. On an early iPad, you, you probably don't, don't notice the, you know, the lecture being given. But sure. Given by someone who's missing an arm. Yes. All the adults in this are, <laughs> are horribly wounded. And that's that's part one. Right. Is the generational. Yeah. You know, there's always someone coming come up to replace you in this in this like automaton society where you just basically serve the state. Yes. And you are cannon fodder and you are nothing. You are not not individuals. Right. Which is But you're given this idea that if you join the military you become a citizen and that makes you a, a it's, higher in the It's brainwashing. Of, yeah, it's it's, it's 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 a society that's brainwashed. Right. Um a uh, totalitarian society that's brainwashed into, into loving violence, into solving <laughs> problems through violence. Um, and so you have this scene and, and the lecture is, you know, Hiroshima was the greatest thing ever. Like that solved World War II, you yeah. know, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, he asks Johnny Rico and he's like, Johnny, do you believe that, that horrific violence can solve all problems? And he's like, but do you understand it? Do you believe it? I don't know. Uh, I don't know, sir. That's that's the little the little kernel of, of humanity inside him that where he could be a normal person, but he's going to be twisted yeah. beyond recognition throughout the course of the film. Because yeah. I, th I think in a more conventional movie, the Johnny Rico character, yeah, there's that tiny bit of humanity at the beginning. He would start to realize throughout the course of the movie that these people are, and him included, are kind of being manipulated and brainwashed and maybe rebel or something like that, but... Not in this movie. Or find a solution other than violence. Other than just violence. continuing the violence. The ending, yeah. the ending sums it up perfectly uh, when, when uh, Doogie Howser, um, Neil Patrick Harris, you know, uses his telepathic powers on the brain bug and he says, it's afraid. It's afraid. It's afraid! And everyone cheers. <laughs> triumphantly. Yeah. Not, not, we found... A mutual solution no. to our our war, but we are winning. And then it's like, here's the next generation. This is all jumping to the end. Sure. Well, you know, oh yeah, there's the younger soldiers that have now shown the, up. Yeah, yeah, but I'm talking about the little the little propaganda film at the end. Oh yeah. It's like Join up. Carmen is now the captain of the ship. She has replaced the other woman. Yeah. She's got a, a younger girl now in her pilot's position. It's just generational, and it's just like, well, keep the fight going. Yeah. Well, keep violence going and. The ships. We have the weapons. We need soldiers. I know I do this a lot, and I apologize. I'm going to apologize in advance to you and our audience. I'm going to bring up Star Trek. Okay. Starship Troopers is is the anti Star Trek mm. um, because Starship Troopers is essentially the Gorn episode called Arena in Star the famous Trek. Gorn the famous Gorn episode. I don't know if you remember the first. The Gorn fight is a small part of it. There's That's a, all anybody knows. Okay. The first part of it, Kirk and 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 the gang. Um, it's an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Uh, Kirk and the gang go to a Federation planet where everyone's been murdered. So in the Gorn episode, the Enterprise goes to a planet uh, with Federation colonists, and they discover they've all been killed, much like what happens in Starship Troopers. They set up a colony, which are Mormons, by the way, for yes, some reason. Yes, yes. So they, they just set up a colony without checking who's there. They don't care. That's the little hint that, like, we started this whole thing. Right. And <laughs> um, uh, same thing happens in, uh, in the arena episode, and everyone's killed, and they kind of figure out who did it. It's the Gorn. They're a hostile race. They look like something that's ugly to us. They look like a, a hideous reptile, like the bugs, right. look like ugly, evil bugs. Um, and so, you know, they chase, they chase the, the Gorn ship. I mean, it's intervened. They're intervened by like these, these Greek god aliens that are like all powerful and they're basically like, you're, you're fighting in our territory, stop. Here's our solution. You and the Gorn, Captain Kirk and the Gorn captain are gonna go down on the planet and fight. Whoever wins, we're gonna blow the other ship up. The Gorn's just like, ah, fuck you, and they start fighting. Um, but in the end, I shall be merciful and quick. Like you were at Cestus Three. You were intruding. You established an outpost in our space. Kirk realizes that 
The Gorn was just doing exactly what the bugs did. Yeah. We set up a colony on, on its Protecting planet. Protecting its territory. Yeah, and so he's like, no, I'm not gonna kill him. I won't kill him! No, I won't kill him. Do you hear? You'll have to get your entertainment someplace else. <laughs> Starship Troopers is the exact same storyline, except for uh, there is no thought process. No, it's just the, the continue perpetuation of violence. There's one moment, because the whole movie, like I said, the whole movie is kind of structured as a propaganda film, so the bugs are just treated as violent monsters that we need to uh, continually blow apart. And there's one moment uh, where someone's looking at a wounded bug, well, some random soldier, and the the bug we see the bug's eye one moment where there might be a little bit of humanity and then he just immediately blows its eye out and green goo shoots everywhere yeah there's no um effort i mean they do all the scientific re research but they never investigate how to communicate with them, how to have a peaceful solution. It's always, it's, it's, it's their society, their society thrives on the need for an enemy. Yeah. And, and that's, and they have all these spaceships, they have faster than light travel. They've made all these advancements, but it's, it's a, a, a fascist society that just breeds, is bred for war. And it's just like, that's how, that's how this, this, how, that's how this society changed, and that's how they operate. Well, we mentioned Casper Van Dien. We should talk about the casting in this movie. Uh, how do you explain to your actors when you're casting them that you're essentially casting them as a joke? Because I can't take anyone in this movie seriously. The only one that's, that's gotten away from it is Neil Patrick Harris. He's kind of transcended, because you're casting this movie for being uh, vapid and hollow and, and like empty behind your eyes. Mm. Uh, that's Va Casper Van Dien, that's Denise Richards. Um, Neil Patrick Harris, his character is a little bit smarter, so maybe that's why <laughs> he's gone on to have... He's secretly evil, though. He's, he, yeah, he shows up in an SS officer outfit he's essentially at the end. a Nazi. He, yeah. And the first, like, bloody battle, uh, he basically did, ran the numbers mm -hmm. and said, well, we have to sacrifice all these people in order to get, to figure out if the bugs are going to do this thing. So, yeah, he's pretty cold-hearted. Yeah. And that's demonstrated early on when he's, like... He's like sleazy. Look at that. 30, 35%, ladies and gentlemen. Big numbers. Carl. Sorry. He's, yeah, early on, he's using technology to sort of, to his advantage, to make fun of Rico. But yeah, um, the only one that's felt kind of miscast to me was Dina Meyer as Diz, right? Dizzy? Um, part of the love square, I guess. Um, because she seems, like the way she performs in the movie is a little like, she seems smarter than the rest of the soldiers. Definitely more than Casper Van Dien. Uh, and I, you kind of think that that's gonna go somewhere, but then she turns out to just be a brainwashed soldier too. I'm gonna fight and we're gonna win! Yeah! Let's talk about the love square because this is the most depressing part of the movie. It's, it's not that an entire society is is bred for war and violence, and everyone in it is brainwashed. <laughs> um, it's the love square, because <laughs> Rico is in love with Carmen, probably for superficial reasons, because she is a flirt. While, yes. while they're playing football, she's flirting with that other guy. And then, you know, she's like, kind of going back and forth, and then she, essentially she's selfish. She wants a career as a, a, a captain or a flight officer, and she, you know, she eventually uh, dumps Rico. Yeah, the whole reason he signed up. And then you have Diz, who's in love with Rico. Um, you could say she's a bit stalkerish. I joined up to get out on my own and you had to tag along. You think I joined the mobile infantry because of you? You saying you didn't? Uh, if it's a girl who, who does that, to joins up to follow him, she's a stalker. <laughs> if it's a man who does it, it's romantic. Oh, okay. But she, she's in love with Rico the whole time, and he's just like, whatever, whatever. I love Carmen. And then all the fates twist. Carmen loves the, the, the flight commander guy, and Rico loves Carmen. 
Diz loves Rico. Yes. And then spoilers, Diz gets killed. The flight commander guy gets killed. He gets his brain sucked out. And then Rico goes to save Carmen. Yeah. And there's the moment when uh, Denise Richards pauses and looks back with like sadness, like, oh, the man I love is back there dead. The true love parts are dead. The, the, t the two that survive are the, the, the shallow the couple. The two that survive yeah. are the shallow, vapid, soulless people. But then we have that wonderful shot that's a call back to the beginning of the movie with the two of them and then Neil Patrick Harris dressed as a Nazi, arms around each other, which goes back to the beginning where they're getting out of school and they're like, let's make a promise that we'll always be friends. No matter what, we'll always be friends. And then at the end of the movie, they are in this horrible, horrible society. And then let's talk about Michael Ironside. Well, Michael Ironside is just the best. Rico! Rico! You know what to do! Ah, yes, sir! All the adults, I, I forgot, because I hadn't watched this movie in quite a while, I forgot how great the supporting cast is. There's so many interesting actors scattered throughout. All the adults, uh, especially early on, we see the people that used to be in the military. They're all horribly deformed. Mobile infantry made me the man I am today. Rue McClanahan, one of the Golden Girls, shows up. And uh, not only, you can tell she's not just blind, but she was clearly, you know, scarred by something. She's probably a scientist and, and working on bugs and one yeah. of them sprayed some kind of horrific acid in her face at some point. Yeah. Sir! What do you want, Rico? I wish to reconsider my request to drop out, sir. You already signed your 1248, son. It wouldn't be legal. I was surprised to see... Dean Norris in the film. Is that the Breaking Bad guy? Yeah. The Breaking Bad guy was also in Paul Verhoeven's Total Recall. He's the one with the weird vagina face. Oh! Yeah, you wouldn't even recognize him. Yeah. Dean Norris has been in a ton of stuff. Oh, yeah. I was curious of everybody's age at the time of filming, and they're all in their, like, kind of late 20s. And I looked up Dean Norris, and he's only he was only five years older than Casper Van Dien. Really? Yeah. Oh my God! He like, looks twenty years older. I know. <laughs> Dean Norris looks like a like exactly the same as he does today, just like l less wrinkly. <laughs> it's like it's like bad genes. <laughs> the handsome Casper Van Dien, and and what five years will do to a person. Okay. We'll also throw out pictures of Rich Evans, um, five <laughs> years apart from each other. <laughs> Here's Rich Evans in 2012, and here he is today. <laughs> yeah, so then you got that thing where they're like, they're like in their very late 20s slash early 30s, they're playing high school students, and there's like the prom, and there's that, there's that, 90210 cheese element on top oh, of yeah, that. Oh yeah, yeah, which is clearly intentional. And I, 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 don't, I guess people didn't notice that when it came out. Like, you would think, especially because it's Paul Verhoeven coming off of, I mean, Robocop was like, what, 10 years earlier at that point. So I think at the period this movie came out, there really wasn't anything like that anymore. That, that sort of kind of satirical, uh, sarcastic, tone because this is like i said it was like titanic and yeah you know, movies like that were coming out at the time yeah the, re the re-release of star wars was 97. i think the timing was bad like you're saying um because and while the while the the point of the movie is not so subtle to us apparently it was too subtle to a lot of people i think the satire worked really well for like the first act right because you set all that up. Fr going from the, the wonderful classroom scene where they're all, you know, wide-eyed kids yeah. with their whole lives ahead of them. We'll be friends together forever. And they, they, they're just buying into this, this society. And then, like, going through all the training. And then the first battle, and then they're all changed, and then it's like cemented then. Yeah. But after that, it kind of like the plot um, goes into like a normal movie mode. They should have had more stuff with the 
what did they call the sky sky director sky marshal sky marshal mm -hmm. Who, um, who had to step down, and there's a new Sky Marshal, and they, they could have added a little bit more politic kind of stuff in the background if they yeah. really wanted to go full blown like, like we're doing total like war propaganda satire. Sure. But instead, it's say, of, yeah, everything that's in the movie, and including the second half, it's very cliche, but it's very sort of purposely cliche. Yeah. So it just follows that general structure, yeah. but in the setting of a crazy sci-fi violent, you know, action movie with giant bugs. But even even if you if you set aside like the angle of the movie as just a big budget sci-fi action movie, it's it's solid. Yeah, I was I was thinking about that in rewatching it uh, cuz I rewatched it on Blu-ray and I was like, man, a lot of these effects still hold up pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there are movies that come out now that don't look this good. And that's another thing too, 97 that was sort of like the end of the era of matte paintings and models. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of models and miniatures in this movie, all the, the big ships, and they look fantastic. Yeah, like yeah, there's that wonderful little sequence when, when Carmen and her friend are flying the little pod, and they're just like showing off. Yeah. And the little ship is a digital ship, but it's going through all these like the maze of all these yeah like, and it's all um, just a, a giant miniature yeah the lunar defense grid or whatever um and it, it's very like return of the jedi when they're flying yeah and there's a shot where it goes and there's all this like metal and beams and, and it flies out and you see the roger young the big spaceship and yeah i, I love all, all all those effects out of the ashes of buenos aires comes first sorrow then anger the only good bug is a dead bug. I don't know. I think I think you just have to ask people, especially younger people, who may barely remember the movie or or may remember it as a big dumb bug movie with, with corny romance. With and corny romance, need to rewatch it. Look at it with a more sarcastic eye. Look and, at it. Yeah. You can see what they're doing. Yeah, the 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 completely even lighting uh, during <laughs> all the. That's the thing. It's like I wanted to complain about because I somewhat recently rewatched Showgirls, and that's actually a good looking movie. Like uh, from a visual standpoint, the cinematography. Uh, all Paul Verhoeven stuff looks great. And then you look at some of the, early, especially the early scenes of Starship Troopers, and yeah, it almost looks like a TV movie. Right. But you gotta realize, like, they're doing that intentionally. Yeah, yeah. It's not gritty and dark. Yeah. I mean, some of the parts are, the battle parts, but, you know, there's that part where they, where uh, the two guys fight, and they get in the fist fight over, you know, and they're like a spaceport, and it's just like, yeah, you can make it smoky and dark and gritty and sci-fi looking, and, but it's like, psh, it yeah. looks like... And, and everybody in the future apparently listens to late 90s uh, alternative rock music. Mazzy Star. Mazzy Star is playing. <laughs> There's a David Bowie song in the film. Oh, yeah, don't they change the they lyrics change the or something? Lyrics, yeah. Um, but yeah, all the characters look like they're in the peach pit. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a part of the charm, though. Yeah. Like it wouldn't work if it was if it was it would look like it was failing at trying to be dramatic yeah. if it if it did dark gritty lighting it's a it's a happy movie on the surface like we all cheer at the end but they're cheering for the wrong reason yes they're not they're not Captain Kirk realizing that he shouldn't kill the Gorn right yeah they're they're killing the Gorn and they're cheering <laughs> because they're, they're killing it. Yeah, well I love that too, like I said earlier about how the, the bugs are never shown any sort of humanity in the movie. They're just mindless monsters. So at the end when he's like, it's afraid. It's like, well of course it's afraid. <laughs> it's just defending its uh, territory. Yeah. And then, you know, you, you could look at it that, that Rico, Rico gets the girl that he's always wanted in the end, but you know that he really doesn't want her, and she really doesn't want him. Yeah. His true love was Diz, uh, a woman who, who truly loved him, and Carmen really doesn't, and he probably really doesn't love her. And it's just like, everyone's cheering at the end, but... Yeah. Well, and then the saddest part is at the very end during the propaganda stuff when we see Rico like leading the troops, and yeah. he's just like yelling, and he's just complete, completely gone. Come on, you idiot. Need you all. Service guarantees citizenship. But yeah, um, I, I don't know. I think 
other than the hollow, empty, soulless, sad, depressed feeling you get at the end when everybody cheers, uh, the movie's wonderful. Yes, you can probably avoid the sequels. Oh, God. I remember I renting know. the second one when it first came out, just out of curiosity, and it was, like, terrible. And then I think I saw the third one, which was written by Ed Neumeyer, who wrote the first one, and who also wrote Robocop. And I don't remember anything about it other than it seeming like it had a little bit more of that satirical humor that the original had. Yeah. But I don't remember a thing about it. I know Rico comes back. Yeah, they bring back Casper yeah. Van Dien. Which... Jo Jolene Belaylock is in it. Wasn't there a cartoon series? There's like toys, like kids' toys for this movie. That's so fucked up. I think I think a lot of people didn't know what to do or make of this movie. Yeah. It's like, yeah, kids should not be watching this. A big of action sci-fi fantasy film. So we'll make toys, I yeah, guess. Yeah. You could be just like Rico. Johnny Rico. You could be a you could be a brain dead, <laughs> brainwashed monster. <laughs>